friends, today we are going to talk about uh, skeletal tuberculosis. I think as students in India, we must remember tuberculosis has existed in human beings since the arrival of man on earth. India seems to be a country with the highest number of tuberculosis patients in the world. Our competitor, of course, in the incidence is China, but India has the highest number of tuberculosis of the body. Today we are going to deal with tuberculosis of the skeletal system. Tuberculosis of the skeletal system, roughly 3% of all patients of tuberculosis have tuberculosis in the bones, joints and spine. Today we will be confining essentially around the tuberculosis of the joints. Over the years, we have many advances available to us, imaging modalities. Earlier there were only x-rays available, today we have x-rays, MRI, isotope bone scans. We have effective anti-TB drugs, safer surgical option, biosocial changes. Changes are taking place in the society. The number of the very poor people is decreasing and that is what will decrease the incidence of tuberculosis in the world. Today, if we are talking only about the articular tuberculosis, mean the tuberculosis of the joints, one should know that 50% of tuberculosis of the skeletal system occurs in the vertebral column. The remaining 50% occurs in other joints. Just to remember as students, just to remember, we will keep it in mind, 50% occur in the vertebral column, 20% occur in the hip joint, 10% occur in the knee joint, 5% in the ankle and foot, 3% in the wrist and hand, 1%, 2% in the elbow and 1% in the shoulder joint. In addition to these joints, any other bone in body can get involved by tuberculosis, though it is a very rare incidence. As rare as skull, as rare as mandible, as rare as ischial tuberosity, all of them can sometimes get infected by tuberculosis. And this, this picture shows you what was available to the people for treating these patients. Before 1960s, there were no specific medicine available for treating TB. These patients were treated in what, what used to be called sanatoria, sanatorium, where these patients used to be put in the bed under the sunlight, give full nutrition and hope to heal the disease. Unfortunately, 50% of people died within two years, 50% survived with the heal disease and all of these 25% had low grade infective, inf infective uh, activity for the whole of their life. Now, then the period of anti-TB drugs started from 1960 onwards and people thought that universal surgical extirpation would be the treatment of choice, little realizing that when we see a case of tuberculosis in a joint, it is not the only area of the body which is involved, the remaining part of the body also shows changes. If we can do screening in everybody, nearly 30% of people will show another active but clinically not visible subclinical lien. Gradually, the treatment moved around to functional treatment of articular tuberculosis. Instead of expecting or doing a fusion of a joint, the treatment now concentrated on producing a healed status with a mobile joint. Before we put the talk about treatment, we'll talk about diagnostic tools. What are the diagnostic tools available to you? in addition to clinical assessment. Clinical assessment is supreme. Do keep it in mind when you examine the patient for a suspected tuberculosis, the first thing we do is examine the patient clinically, compare it with the opposite side, do palpate the regional lymph nodes, ask for an x-ray. X-ray, if possible, of both the joints, 
the one with the disease and the one without disease together we call it comparative x-rays and also insist upon an x-ray of the chest. Many of these patients will show a lien in the lungs which will again help you being sure of the diagnostics. Rongeograms, x-rays in the early stages would show only soft tissue changes like swelling, like effusion in the joints. Now, MRI is again shows non-specific changes. We will see them. They will show you fluid collection in the joint or edema in the bones. Some of these tests like BCG test, Mantus test, in a country like ours, we, we, are, we are considered TB endemic countries. They, they can be falsely negative or falsely positive. Almost all of us in India have had BCG injection in the early childhood and all of us will almost show a positive Mantus test. If it is a Mantus test is negative, think of it, has the person, has the patient undergone immunodepression? That is why Mantus has become negative. Then we think of uh, mycobacterium positivity. It's very difficult to get a positive tuberculous AFB in the tissues. It's not easy to get it. The available data are in, the, in a patient with a synovial disease, aspirate the fluid, less than 10% will show you so-called AFB, acid fast mycobacterium. To, Sanual tissue about 20 percent, osseous tissue about 10 percent. Serology, one of the new, one of the more recent tests which has come is serology or polymerase chain reaction PCR. It is a very sensitive test, but if it is sensitive, if it is obtained, if the tissue has been obtained from a clinically active disease. In our country, many of us can show PCR positive because we all had BCG injection in childhood. Maybe all of us have passed through infection of tuberculosis in the lungs, which has healed and which was not symptomatic. And many of us will show PCR positive. However, PCR positive is of significance if you have obtained the material for testing from a area which is clinically active disease. Histology is positive in about 80% of patients. Histology means biopsy. Again, in biopsy, the most classical picture in biopsy is a granuloma with caseation. But uh, majority of the patient in our country would show you granulometrous lien, rarely seeing caseation. Caseation is very rarely seen. By the time a patient reaches the hospital or reaches an orthopedic surgeon, most of them already had some sort of antibiotics. Probably that is one of the reasons the histological picture or biological picture would generally show a chronic inflammatory lien. Sometimes will show granulometrous lien. Rarely they will find caseation in the granuloma. Of course, the most specific tissue to be diagnosed or tissue which is sure of the diagnosis of tuberculosis is a granuloma with caseation, but that is becoming quite a rare finding now with so many antibiotics available by the time the patient reaches you for this sort of uh, diagnosis. Here is an example of MRI. Again, what is it showing you? It is showing you a collection in the hip joint. This is all the white fluid in the hip joint compare it with the normal hip joint. It is also showing that the femoral head is white on the disease side, whereas it's normal on the non-disease side. All this tells us that there is a fluid in the knee, hip joint. All this tells us that there is some edema in the bone. It does not tell us what is the basic cause. These sort of changes can be found in almost all arthritis or arthralgic conditions. We will see a few examples and we will also see some of the charts which will show you. These are all non-specific changes, but they are sensitive. It does show that there is a pathology. Now it's for us to find what is the pathology. Here is another example. Young boy running around but started having pain in the left hip joint. MRI done, MRI showed that there is fluid collection in the synovium. 
which again doesn't show us anything except that there is inflammation in the joint, synovium is thickened, synovial fluid is excessive quantity present. We see the x-rays, x-rays are normal and this patient turned out to be a case of a condition which is called transient synovitis which is a non-specific condition and the whole thing heals within a few weeks. Here is another example, MRI of a shoulder. Again shows you a collection of synovium within the shoulder joint, some collection in the neighboring bursa and edema in the femoral, in the humeral head. It doesn't give us the diagnosis. All these pictures can be present in tuberculosis, pyogenic infection, uh, rheumatoid disorder, bleeding disorder, post-traumatic effusions. When we see the x-ray, x-ray does show erosion of the upper end of the humerus, erosion of the cortices and hardly any newborn formation. Now, there is the difference between a pyogenic infection of long standing and tuberculosis. In tuberculosis, there is hardly any newborn formation. Whereas, if it was a case of pyogenic infection, some degree of newborn formation, subperiosteal newborn formation does take place. However, even in tuberculosis, newborn formation can take place if tuberculous joint has been infected with a secondary infection because of the formation of sinuses and ulcers. Now, what is the differential diagnosis early stage? We were just